do we visually miscommunicate? We can all spend time crafting a design or illustration to technical perfection and then get floored by how others perceive what they see. Yes, I really like your new turret sign design. They don't realize they made toilets. We've all done it. Hopefully we have all realized before the job gets printed. How do we avoid communication going down the pan? What is there in plain sight, but not there perceptually? Yes, that is correct. It is a riddle. Everything has a quality in phenomenological parlance, an essence. We can quantify our world with data. Lengths, widths, depths, mass, weight, height, quotas, etc. But quantifying does not explain the esoteric and existential qualities of lived experiences, of audiences, life worlds. We turn to psychology, philosophy, phenomenology to help understand experiences. We can define the moments of lived experiences, of social encounters, of the daily encountering of the products and things we use emotionally, subjectively and irrationally. We cannot quantify a quality. But as designers and illustrators, you are tasked every day to visually communicate to irrational, subjective and emotional humans. You are designing as much for their heart as for their minds. Pierce's quality sign, which I have introduced to you, is the first building block in your creative warehouse of building blocks. Together with iconic representation and the romantic possibility of meaning, a quality sign forms the most simplest of 10 semantic sign classifications. To begin encoding semantic signs, it begins with a quality and nothing more. Remember, Pierce says, nothing is a sign until interpreted as a sign. The act of interpretation is triggered by perception. Perception is triggered by these early encoded semiotic levels of employing qualities, familiarity, resemblances, and possibilities. These qualities are things already known to the target audience from within their life worlds. They have, in their lived experiences, encountered similar qualities. The possibility of a drawn line being more than itself rests on its drawn stroke weight and path it takes across the page. A simple line is a simple line until it is perceived as a possibility its shape is similar to X that the audience has experience of. This perception of possible meaning of a simple line as something else is in the subconscious mind of the audience. Does the line suggest the quality of a tree trunk, an animal's back, a letter, etc.? Depends on context. The line is a mere mark, but a mere mark that can, to someone, begin to mean something more, or not. Too often, creators believe semantic signs are something tangible they make and quantify as that is a semantic sign. Too often, creators ignore the fact that everything they design or illustrate has the capacity to visually communicate meaning. Semiosis offers creators to ensure they enhance visually communicating the intended meaning. Meaning bearing is shared between the creative and the audience. Humans are evolutionarily hardwired to look for meaning in patterns as our inherited survival early warning system. If the shapes, lines, colors, etc. are the iconic visual communication building blocks within more complex designs or illustrations, then the qualities they attempt to resemble are the subconscious hooks to grab audience attention. Romantic. How a shape, line, color, etc. attempts to suggest a possible meaning through as a resemblance in the mind of the audience is crucial. As I have said already, a line is just a line until it is perceived as something else. You can call this magic, but let us be rational and say it is semiotic. Sign action in action. Is the audience's perception of a simple line as something else correct? Check out episodes 3.1 to 3.4 for details on the immediate dynamic and final effects on interpretation. We covered in these episodes the path of perception, lit experiences, and how these can lead perception to interpreting the intended encoded meaning. In visual communication, it is easy for designers and illustrators to just create what they feel answers the client's brief. We have seen in this episode's introduction an example of visual communication. The visual identity for a business center using a bold graphic based on the owner's initials represents the business in the eyes of the creators who designed it. 
but the same graphic also has possible visual qualities shared with a visual representation of a possible figure sitting on a toilet. This is an extreme case and a humorous example, but one with serious consequences for the client. The creator using basic visual communication building blocks creates a graphic that says X. Some audience members sees Z, then everyone can only see Z and not X. The client needs the audience to focus on X. The creative never intended to ever put Z in the minds of the audience. The creative and the clients are mortified that anyone could see X, but interpret Z. Semiosis and abductive reasoning hypothesis can help creatives to reduce miscommunication. How? Well, it all begins at the beginning of creativity. The good news is creators do not have to relay in anything. Applying semiosis is merely enhancing what creators already tacitly do during ideation. Semiosis offers a structure to mindfully focus the creation of ideas for answering a client's brief, one semiosic sign action at a time. At the micro level, all designs or illustrations are created for many marks, lines, strokes, shapes, colors, etc. At this level, each of these are micro visual communication building blocks. Each block on its own is nothing more than itself. Once composed with another block, they offer the potential to be meaning bearing. At this point, this potential may be encoded by the creative to mean the back of an animal or a drop cap on a printed page, etc. It is up to the audience's perception as to what they interpret. Any semiotic sign action will lie dormant in the block until the audience perceive it as suggesting something else. The moment a line is perceived as an animal's back or the letter C, etc., is the moment that semiotic begins to enhance the visual communication. To put in the mind of the audience what the creative on behalf of the client intends to communicate begins with quality science. It begins with iconic representation of familiar qualities to suggest romantic possible resemblances to things already experienced by the target audience. These three facets of the determination flow between the concept, its representation and interpretation form into meaning bearing ephemeral semiotic science at a subconscious suggestive level. A line is a line, a block is a block, but when placed in connection to each other, more complex designed elements emerge. If the audience sees a brick, they see a brick. They also know what walls, houses and buildings are. A brick has the potential to be any one of those things. An innocent mark has the potential to become many things and carry meaning. Marks, lines, strokes, shapes, colours, etc. individually have a quality. That quality may be nothing more than how they were created. A brush stroke, a spilled pool of ink, an off-cut shape from another shape, etc. They're not semi signs. Marks, lines, strokes, shapes, colours, etc. individually have a quality. That quality may be suggested to something else other than itself. A brush stroke may suggest a familiarity to a length of hair. An ink blot can suggest the wing of a butterfly. An off-cut shape from another shape may suggest an ear, etc, etc. They are semiotic signs. They can become meaning-bearing. They can be perceived as qualities suggesting something else. They can work together to carry meaning of more complex messaging. They are just marks, lines, strokes, shapes, colours, etc. The marks, lines, strokes, shapes, colours, etc. are micro visual communication building blocks to convey meaning beyond themselves. A stroke of the brush will never convey Thomas Paine's rights of man tract, but it can be used to suggest qualities of a tree, hair, sunshine, water, etc. It becomes a mental cul-de-sac for creatives to fixate on semiotic signs as tangible things they create. Is this a semiotic sign? That must be a semiotic sign. Instead, Think of encoding semiotic science as building up visual qualities to possibly become perceivable as meaning something else. Oh, guess what? This is what designers and illustrators already do. Semiosis just helps you to do this with more intent to convey the appropriate meaning. In the next episode, we will look at semiotically blocking in meaning beyond qualities.
Thanks for watching. Check out the other Semi Usus 101 episodes, like and share them with your friends. And hit the bell and subscribe buttons to be notified when next week's free Semi Usus 101 episode is published. You can also follow Semi Usus 101 on the socials for updates. It is at Semi Usus 101 on Instagram and threads. See you all again next week for more Semi Usus 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills.